Hi, this is Leslie Langnall with Make Parts Fast, and I'm here at the Rapid Plus TCT Show. I'm here with Glenn Fletcher of EOS, and Glenn, what are EOS has been involved in additive manufacturing for an incredibly long time. So you have a, a unique perspective on how additive manufacturing can actually play in the manufacturing field. What do you see? Where is it now? Where do you see it going? How is it developing? Well, that's really an interesting question, uh, Leslie. We've been uh, in the additive space for 28 years. <laughs> yeah. That's quite a while. That space has evolved at an incredible rate and continues to accelerate. To give you some idea, the US was formed in 1989 and it took us almost 20 years to sell the first 1,000 systems. Wow. We're now at 3,000 systems, so just over. Uh, it took five years to sell the second 1,000, <laughs> and it took three years to sell the third 1,000. And as of today, we're gearing up to supply our customers with 1,000 systems per year. Wow. So uh, I think uh, it took a little while to get mm -hmm. it uh, established. The acceptance. Uh, uh, the acceptance didn't come easily. Mm -hmm. So to break through and to actually make that sort of impact as I said, it took a little while, but now it's going crazy. So how, how is metals playing into the acceptance or non-acceptance of additive in the manufacturing world? What I always come back to, Leslie, is the fact that we're still only scratching the surface. Yeah. So if you think of the uh, industries that we would likely to disrupt, um, on the metal side it would be casting, mm -hmm. it would be those traditional metal cutting, milling, turning, grinding uh, type of processes. And on the polymer side it's injection molding. Are we seeing greater acceptance on the part of engineers or is, are they still wanting to be shown that, ma that additive materials can be as good as a machining material or an injection molding material? Well, it actually goes a little further than that. Materials is a huge issue. Yeah. And if we take on the polymer space, there are, uh, uh, consider the polymer space, there are thousands of polymers yeah. available. And if you think of those that can be actually additively, or used in additive uh, manufacturing, it's a very small number. Okay. Um, for uh, lots of technical uh, reasons. So we have to work on that. We have to increase the number of materials uh, that are available to our, our customers. We have to give our customers more options, of course, um, but we also have to think a little more laterally. We have to think a little bit out of the box because what additive manufacturing does is it allows you to develop new materials. Yes. So we're working with organizations like Iconic and GKN yeah. and Ehrlichon and a lot of very, very sophisticated, very well-known and materials companies, not only to replicate what is available to na uh, today, not only to be able to produce in the alloys that we know, but actually develop alloys mm -hmm. that are uh, considerably better and have properties that are very specific for very specific application. Beyond that, I think one of the things that we try to do to differentiate ourselves is we have recruited an enormous amount of technical resorts within the organization. We have a, a group within our organization called Additive Minds, and that uh, group is dedicated to educating, consulting, and providing those people who are cu curious about additive uh, manufacturing with the means to make good, rational decisions. Okay, so for engineers who are looking to hear more about what EOS offers as far as equipment as well as materials, they should go to, what's the website? The website is eos.info, so you can find a lot of uh, information there. Great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's a pleasure, Leslie. That's the EOS perspective on additive manufacturing here at the Rapid TCT Show.